Have you ever wondered why the United Kingdom has been the breeding ground for so many dog breeds and their subsequent prominence? Whether it's terriers, herding dogs, foxhounds or bird dogs, the UK has contributed significantly to the world of dog breeds by developing over 75 dog breeds which I will show you in this video in alphabetical order. The answer to this phenomenon lies in the historical context of the country, particularly the impact of the enclosure movement. But before that, let's mention other factors that helped United Kingdom to be home to so many dog breeds. United Kingdom is an old and isolated country where land-raised dogs were traditionally used for all kinds of purposes, from hunting to herding, guarding as drover dogs or as companions. The UK historically also avoided all the bad stuff that would destroy cultural artifacts like dog breeds. They avoided big land wars, they were never colonized and they maintained their identity for centuries. All these factors meant that the United Kingdom always was a good place for various and diverse dog breed development. The United Kingdom was also the first country to create a breed kennel club with breeding rules, which prevented excessive interbreeding, which could destroy a dog breed as fast as any war or other major catastrophe. Now let's talk about the enclosure movement I mentioned in the beginning of the video. The enclosure movement which began in the 12th century with the enclosure of royal lands gained significant momentum in the late 18th and early 19th centuries. During this period, rural England underwent a transformation with substantial shifts away from subsistence agriculture. Large forests were cleared and the land was repurposed for sheep farming surrounded by stone walls and dense hedges. This movement was a seismic shift in the economics and social fabric of the UK. Approximately one quarter of cultivated acreage or around 6 million acres was enclosed through direct acts of parliament and an additional 4 to 7 million acres were privately enclosed by the wealthy. This rich man's land grab forced millions of poor tenant farmers and squatters of the land pushing them into overcrowded cities and towns. The enclosure movement had both detrimental and beneficial consequences. While it led to immense suffering for people, it provided opportunities for dogs, especially foxhounds, collies and terriers. Before the movement, squatters and inholders on common land made fox hunting with hounds challenging. However, after people were removed from the land and replaced by sheep and cattle, the number of free-ranging mounted hounds expanded rapidly. Additionally, the enclosure movement facilitated the rapid improvement of farm stock. In the 18th century, livestock breed was largely random. Still, by the late 1700s, farmers like Robert Backwell realized that by separating males from females, which was made easier by enclosed fields, they could selectively breed and improve the quality of their animals. This deliberate inbreeding of livestock and selection for desirable traits led to the creation of new and improved breeds of sheep and eventually extended to other farm animals and dogs. In 1859, the first formal dog show was held at Newcastle upon Tyne, sponsored by two shotgun makers featuring pointers and setters exclusively. John Henry Walsh, the editor of the Field magazine and one of the judges at the show, later founded the Kennel Club. With the advent of dog shows, the creation of dog breeds proliferated. In 1800, there were only 15 designated dog breeds, but by 1865, that number had exceeded 50 and continued to grow, reaching triple digits after the establishment of the Kennel Club in 1873. The Kennel Club imposed stricter standards, segregating and cataloging breeds into specific categories. Dog shows became social events, attracting middle-class individuals seeking purebred puppies to enhance their social status. The differentiation between do show dogs and working dogs became more pronounced over time. Dogs were judged on various criteria, including tail set, coat markings, eye color and even their facial expression. The legacy of the enclosure movement continues to shape the world of dogs. In 2002, the Countryside Alliance organized a massive march in London with 500,000 participants supporting hunting with dogs. Tony Blair used the Parliament Act to ban fox and hare hunting with dogs despite opposition in House of Lords. Political and economic forces that set British dogs on different paths two centuries ago 
still influence the dog world today, with debates over hunting and dog breeding regulations continuing. In conclusion, the history of dog breeds in the UK is intricately linked to the enclosure movement, the development of agriculture and the emergence of dog shows. These historical events have left a lasting impact on the diversity and function of dog breeds, raising questions about the future of working dogs and the role of dogs in modern society. Thank you for watching, see you in the next video.